Now get more into the story here. We're joined by Mikhail Fishman, a journalist for TV Rain News Network there joining us from Amsterdam. Thanks for being with us on this story. I mean, it doesn't even appear to all my reading here that they really even made much of an effort to, to make it seem like a serious crime or a real breach of national security. So I, I was left really wondering how this was justified publicly. But on top of this, given all the circumstances today, being an honest journalist seems like one of the most dangerous professions in Russia today. Can you even be a true journalist covering the government anymore in the country? Um, yes, uh, thank you for having me. And of course, the, uh, the trial and the verdict uh, and the sentence uh, 22 years absurd uh, sentence for, uh, to Ivan Safronov reflects the state in which uh, journalism uh, has found itself in Russia, I mean independent journalism. No, it's virtually, to, to make long story short and to answer your question, mm -hmm. it's virtually impossible to, uh, to, to report, to work as a journalist, which uh, means be independent in your journalistic uh, work uh, inside from inside Russia anymore. And that's uh, the uh, the major, I'd say, outcome. I mean, we understood it before, and the uh, majority, vast majority of independent journalists already have left the country. Uh, and this trial started long before the war. But uh, the sentence, of course, reflects the reality. And the reality is is what it is, that, uh, that uh, journalism um, uh, work with open sources, which is the what uh, accusation um, to Ivan Safronov is based on, is uh, now punished with 22 years in jail. Wow. It's a staggering uh, truth here that we're seeing this. I mean, I want to bring this up. It came up in the report we showed, but his father, of the same name, was also a journalist, uncovering alleged deals with Iran, I believe, at the time, investigating government dealings. Mysteriously killed 15 years ago. I mean, so there's a bit of family legacy in this, sort of pushing back against the government. This is uh, actually, I mean, nobody never confirmed, and yeah. it's uh, it's an open question what happened to his father. Uh, his uh, relatives, his friends, friends of the family believe that he was murdered, uh, but uh, it was never independently confirmed. He fell off the window in his in his home. Yes, that was long ago, but it's 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 just, I mean, uh, it looks like uh, for, for their family, uh, for for Ivan Safronov's mother, it's. Uh, it's like uh, going through hell for decades already. I mean, losing her husband uh, like he uh, lost his life and now seeing her son uh, um, receiving this uh, 22 year sentence. That's, uh, uh, that's the, uh, the, 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 the fate in its, uh, in its uh, um, uh, most unbelievable, uh, unbelievable uh, outcome, I'd say. I understand on top of this, the, the prominent paper there, Novo Gazeta, that, that I think you worked at also, uh, Safaronov worked at at one point, getting shut down, I think this week. How symbolic or serious or where does that fit? Is this just more of the, of the dominoes falling and this crackdown on free journalism? Um, the, um, Ivan Safaronov was accused of treason and, uh, uh, and we know, and his, uh, his trial was uh, totally classified. Everything was classified. The trial was classified. The accusation was classified. The, uh, the, the, uh, um, the witnesses' uh, statements were classified. Everything was classified. But we knew, we learned recently from a uh, leaked uh, accusation report that uh, what he's accused, is, uh, accused of is totally baseless. It's uh, based on, on his work with open sources as journalists. Uh, uh, although he was arrested when he was already quit journalism and uh, became uh, an advisor to yes state um, state space uh, space agency, but we now know that what he is charged is uh, charged um, charged is uh, is based on his journalistic work. So uh, so it's uh, it's uh, it's um, it's a sign of uh, of a total. Uh, I mean. During this war, during this last half, few months, uh, six months, a little bit more already, uh, of course, independent journalists have learned that uh, it's impossible to operate from uh, from, from, from Russia and to do that to do well, that job. Well, I have you. How but about now, you? I mean, you're you're in Amsterdam, for example. You've, I, I believe, I had to get away from the country for this. What are you up to? How are you continuing your work outside the country? 
Well, that's what we uh, we we do. What we can do. Uh, we uh, well, I had to leave me with again with many other with many other colleagues with many other. Uh, with basically the industry of independent journalism, we had to leave uh, early March, and uh, and uh, now we. Uh, I mean, uh, I I have my responsibility as a journalist to keep bringing this war back to Russia because it's uh, heavily censored, yeah. but still YouTube is open. YouTube uh, is in Russia, and I'm bringing the war back to Russia through YouTube. That's what I can do. And uh, I'm doing all, all I can to uh, to still keeping my job. And I feel this as my responsibility as being not only a journalist, but also a Russian, a Russian citizen. That's very, very important for me. And I th think for, for many others as well. I encourage uh, my viewers to tune in there, TV Rain News Network and YouTube for sure. Mikhail Fishman, thanks for joining us from Amsterdam on this story.